I would like to say a massive congratulations to uh, Mr. and Mrs. Callow. I hope you've had yeah. a wonderful day today. Um, but it's just one of those things. I think Ramsey were keen to play it, um, which is their right to do so. Well, it um, would be if you knew. Exactly. Yeah. The weaker backers side. Um, and backers A turned up yeah, with a weaker side. Um, it, in fact, in the Vikings A, Vikings B team game, um, Kim Carney was going to that wedding this afternoon. She, she had to play with her hair curlers and hair net on, you know, <laughs> just so we could get a full, te- well done, full team out. So, it's, you know, player of the day, I think, has to go to Kim for that. But back as a... I hope yeah. there are pictures. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. But uh, that's certainly commitment. But I think it's one of those, I think, personally, I'd have been for, you know, calling the game off. At the end of the day, the two hockey personalities, you could have easily found another time to play that game at this mid-week. point of the season, yep. midweek, or even a free weekend, which there will be. You know, it's so early in the season. There is going to be a free free weekend slot at some point. But, yeah, Ramsey weren't too keen on the idea. And I think I, I can't, can't really grumble at the fact they've done that. You know, if you see a chance, you're going to take it. Let's uh, go to that game then. Uh, two all, it finished. Uh, and uh, two less likely scorers for backers who were behind. Yeah, they were 1-0 down at half-time. Uh, Ramsey A, Billy Kane, Jan Kane, the brothers scoring there. Uh, um, backers A though, uh, Chris Whiting is back on the Island Man now, which is a big boost to backers. Um, and uh, Tony Bentley Roberts getting on the score sheet there as well to save a point for backers A. Uh, it was Vikings A, the champions three, Vikings B one. Closer than many would have said it might have been. Yeah, it was 1 0 at half time to the A team. Um, and Thank you, Tony. Vikings A didn't have it all their own way, um, in all honesty. They went in at 1 0 up at half time. Vikings B didn't really register a chance in the first half. Um, but yeah, in the second half, Vikings B started pushing, prodding, or creating a little bit more pressure, getting a few short corners as well in the second half, which they just didn't do in the first half. But Vikings A were scared at that point, and they managed to get a couple of goals in. Neil Crow with a penalty flick in the second half, um, and Tim Henderson, uh, sorry, Tom Wilson to finish off the scoring with a deflected shot. Um, Tim Henderson scored for Vikings A in the first half, and Vikings B, a rare goal for Chelsea Borden. It was Celts nil, Valkyries A 2. Yeah, I said this one was going to be a close game, um, and it was. It was 1-0 to Valkyrie at half-time. Uh, Greg Miller made a comment on the text that it was a very, very young Valkyrie side, which is really good to hear. Um, I've been saying for a couple of seasons they've had a little bit of a generation gap between the youngsters coming through and you know the, the older players starting to, to move down. But he was the oldest player by a country mile, he said, on the pitch today. So Jess Loder, and I can't, don't have the second goal scorer here for Valkyrie. In Mixed Hockey Division 1, obviously, backers CB was postponed and will get replayed that one because uh, they were Thursday. Oh, yeah, they were obviously feeding into the A-team on that one. Ramsey Ravens 2, Harlequins A3. Yeah, I called this one out as a close game. Ramsey Ravens newly promoted last season. Harlequins A started the season as sort of potential title challengers and I knew it was going to be close. Ramsey Ravens, really good side. Dan Hurd and Maisie Megson for Ramsey Ravens. Harlequins A was Heli- Elliot Henson. Sam Lancaster and Dom Hubble. And it was Valkyrie's B1, Saracen Sabres 3. Yeah, another game where I said this could potentially you know, highlight who's going to be the favourites for the title. In the back of my mind, it was always going to be Saracen Sabres. Um, George Powell with two, Kyle Watson for Saracen Sabres, and Kieran Gell got the consolation for Valkyrie's B. In uh, Rossborough Mixed Hockey Division 2, it was Camags nil, Backers Colts 1. Not a Colt player, though. Um, well, yeah, he's been in the Colts side for a few years now. You know and, where I'm coming from. Yeah, I don't want to uh, be ageist, though. Um, <laughs> he is one of the uh, older players, shall we say, but he, he always gets on the score sheet. And to be More fair, experienced players. Um, him and Tim Leeming, who have been ever-present in the Colts sides for backers over the past few years, have got huge amounts of experience to pass on to those youngsters, and they do they really do learn a lot off them. Um, but yeah, Peter Vernon Brown on the score sheet for backers Colts. Yeah, got the winner. Well done, Pete. Saracens Colts 3, Harlequins Colts 1. I love having three of these Colts teams in the same league because they are all super, super competitive, but it never spills over the edge. Um, Saracens Colts today won the won the day today with Tom Dalton Brown with two and Eden McCubbin on the score sheet. Harlequins Colts, another slightly older player on the score sheet and Paul Nuttall. I wasn't going to say it. Valkyrie <laughs> C nil, Vikings C five. Yeah, Vikings C were relegated last year, um, and Valkyrie C were you know pushing for that title um, last year towards uh, the start of the season. But Vikings C, after having such a disappointing season last year, they they uh, they 
didn't register a point um, in their own right on the pitch on the day anyway. But Louis Porter with a hat trick, Georgie Higgins and Morven Smith on the score sheet for Viking City. Yeah, they've done well. Ross for a mixed hockey at Division Three. Backers D nil, Vikings D seven. Yeah, and uh, it was uh, a fairly one sided game, but I have to say I umpired this game and it was a really, really pleasant game to, to umpire. Backers D are always a great team to play in, play against and umpire for as well. Um, they're, they're very much the, the social team of the, the Manx hockey structure. Um, Vikings D, uh, Joanna Roney with uh, two really well taken goals on the back post. Danny Kane, man of the match today with two goals. Andy Harding on his return with mm-hmm. two goals and Ian Perry. Ramsey Rookies 2, Valkyries D3. Yeah, from what I've heard, this game is a really, really good game. Um, Donna Harrison on the score sheet for Valkyries D, George, George Crellin as well. Ramsey Rookies, Dan Stevens and Tom Hurd. Saracen Sharks 1, Vikings Colts 5. Yeah, I haven't quite had the Vikings Colts scorers in yet, um, but the Saracen Sharks scorer was Liam Farrar. And it was sudden as 5, Harlequins B nil. Yeah, Sarah's Southerners alongside Vikings, Colts and Vikings, they're all making uh, real hard pushes for that early title challenge. And it looks like it's going to be a really close fight in this division this year. I don't quite have the Southerners scorers as yet. Oh, I have got a message though. Is it the Southern scorers? Uh, it is. Um, just first names though. Um, Joe with two. I'm guessing Don Stewart with one. Paul with one and Jeff with one. Okay, so the opening uh, day of the season, we heard at lunchtime from uh, Peter Foxton about uh, some tweaks to the rules, not bringing in the quarters, it's staying as halves at uh, club level hockey. Uh, But was anyone caught out today by not being five or being allowed to come near at the edge of the circle if it's uh, right on the edge of the circle where the hit's taken, defenders don't have to retreat? Um, in all honesty, no. Um, I think the, what the Ironman Hockey Umpire Association have done really well is highlight these changes to, to everybody um, through social media, via the MHA as well. So everybody had a fairly good idea of what the plan was. And captains, to be fair as well, from the game I played in and you know during training and the, um, the game I umpired today, you know they were very well versed on what was coming. There was only one sort of slight you know encroaching into the D on a short corner, which was just a quiet word and, you know, They'll learn, and that was in uh, the Vikings D backers D game, and Peter was, was uh, making the point they are going to have to coach in the first yeah, that's few just weeks it, as well, yeah. just so everyone does get used to the it was, changes. It was just coaching in that, and to be fair, I had an easy game to coach in. There's nobody going to question me on it or anything, and they take it on board. And eventually, in a couple of weeks, I think they find nobody will nobody nope. will realise any, anything's changed. Nobody got sent to the halfway line. No, today. not today. Not not that I saw anyway. Vikings, though, and Valkyries and Ramsey all be delighted, though, back as they have dropped a, a point so early in the campaign. I know the circumstances have been discussed quite a lot, but uh, and congratulations, a big wedding as well in the club again, just to emphasise. Yeah, and to be fair, it's been a really, really good day. I think what the, the score lines demonstrate is this is going to be a mighty close league, and whoever wins is going to be ecstatic, and whoever gets relegated is is probably going to feel really hard done by because this is a super, super tight league. I mean, Valkyries, eh, they've, they've rebuilt this mm. season with all the youngsters in there. Um, and then, so, yeah. Well, we'll see, won't we? But a 2-0 win for them. But you're right, they have uh, maintained an experienced line-up for quite some time, we'll call it that. Uh, Sam Spooner, thanks very much indeed. Thank-